The, the first speaker of today is uh, Mohamed Ghazi Bakili from the Department of Controlling Computer Engineering. He will give us a speech entitled the Industry 4.0, Industrial IoT Announcement and WSN Performance Analysis. Uh, Mohamed received the Bachelor of Science in Telecommunication Engineering and his Master of Science in Mechatronic Engineering from Politecnico di Torino. He is currently a PhD student at the Department of uh, uh, Control and Computer Engineering in Politecnico under the supervision of Professor Claudio Giovanni De Martini. His research interests concern uh, Industry 4.0, the future of factories, and focus on industrial wireless sensor network and IoT. Currently, he is working on the six-stitch protocol on WSN, and uh, he developed a simulator for the TSCH network for Industry 4.0 framework for small, medium enterprises. During his PhD, he developed many IoT projects, such as Pollution Monitoring Station, the six-stitch simulator at the IIIG Gateway, establishing an extended OPC IoT platform for Industry 4.0. Besides uh, his main activity, he worked on quantum optimization for industrial sector to enhance industrial processes. Please, Mohamed. Good afternoon. Uh, actually, thank you so much for um, making this event happen for everyone, also for the group members and also for the uh, students. Uh, today, uh, I will talk about the, my research in the past three years, which I have done. Uh, okay, one moment, please. Uh, I have done many actually activity, but uh, what I have uh, today actually we would like to share with you is uh, about the wireless sensor network. My activity is uh, Industry 4.0, so uh, any uh, work which I have done was around the domain of the industrial domain, like uh, industrial uh, wireless sensor network or industrial IoT. And uh, I try to increase the reliability and latency uh, in the industrial applications. Uh, but what is Industry 4.0? As you know, industry, industrial revolution uh, started many years ago, maybe two, two uh, centuries ago, so in the 18th century. So when steam power came to the industry and uh, started to change the industry. So the second uh, industrial revolution was in the 19th century when uh, mass production uh, happened by using the electricity. And the third industrial revolution uh, started in the 60s when uh, engineer and, uh, and uh, scientists and researcher used the computing power and, and they used the programming language to program the machines and robotics arms and a lot of uh, manufacturing, let's say uh, automation happened in the 60s. 60s. And um, uh, the fourth generation, which we are living now, in the fourth generation is about connecting the physical world to the digital world. Uh, and uh, by connecting this, uh, actually uh, connect uh, to create it, uh, by creating this connection, we can use the power of the uh, computing, power of the cloud computing, and we can create and we can optimize the production line and we can create a new business model, uh, such as uh, customization of product and uh, uh, proposing the new product to the business owner to produce the pro I mean new new type of the product but all this activity comes with the good communication and sustainable communication which we will talk today uh, this talk will be around this communication about the wireless sensor network and IOT and how we could use this type of devices in the industrial domain but next generation also, we should not forget for the next generation, which usually I mention it. And uh, also uh, during my past activity, I have done some, uh, some small work about, around that. Is will be using the power of the quantum computing to optimize our production line. Maybe in the future, we can call it industry 5.q. 
who knows, but this is something that we have to work on that as a researcher and as an engineer for the future of the factories. But I started to talk about the communication, but uh, what does it mean communication or what does it mean sustainable communication? Because as I said to you, we need, I mean, Industry 4.0 talks about it, connecting the, all the assets and devices uh, in the shop floor to the top floor, which top floor, usually it means the clouds, uh, cloud computing and the servers, which is in the cloud or folk, which is a middle of the cloud and the shop floor. But the activity which has to be done is a communication. And usually IoT could help uh, industrial application or industrial, uh, uh, let's say, or I can maybe simplify this, uh, connecting the machines like a CNC's, robots, and all this as, uh, stuff uh, to connect to the, to the cloud. So IoT can help. But how we could use these uh, devices and what condition they should have. Sustainable communication usually in the, um, let's say, industry categorized in a four different category as a uh, performance analysis or performance indicator, they call it. High they should have a high reliability, low latency, and low buffer co power consumption. Also, uh, we could talk about the flexibility. Flexibility, it means, uh, possibility to connect to the different vendors. As you know, in the factories, when you go, uh, I mean, when I'm talking about the factory and industrial communication, I'm talking about the shop floor. So in the real factory, which a lot of devices and different from the different vendor installed, and they have a different communication protocol. So we are, as an engineer, we have to provide the secure channel and uh, let's say, Op, uh, and communicate between devices in optimized way. So this is very important. And using the wireless sensor network could help us to do this activity. And today we will see how we could, what is the problem actually, when I'm talking about the problem about, about the wireless sensor network, what is the problem? What is the challenges in the wireless sensor network when we come to the in, uh, industry or when we go to the factory, we see, okay, we install, we have a lot of devices and we can install immediately, but what will happen after that? Uh, also, I would like to mention uh, one, one of the protocol, which I work on that and all uh, today's talk will be around this protocol, which is a 6 protocol, uh, which is a TACH protocol, time scheduling channel hoping protocol via uh, IP6. And I will show you uh, what uh, proposal uh, we work and we propose to the uh, six uh, let's say community uh, we propose the mathematical model to estimate the performance indicators such as reliability latency and power consumption for the single and multi hope networks and at the end i would like to share uh, with you the la latest let's say activity which uh, we have done in our group uh, about the tsch uh, simulator tsch simulator is a uh, sort of predictor for the uh, performance analysis, which it can predict the, the performance uh, indicator of the network by configuring, uh, I mean, a, a TSCH matrix easily and uh, giving a very, uh, I mean, it, it provides very user-friendly interface for the end user. So, but what is the problem? You know, when we are start in the industrial IoT or uh, wireless sensor network, usually we are working in the in the factory, and we have to try maybe try to segment because we are working also in the industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 has some requirement, so it starts uh, by starting to work in the factory. We can see the factory plant. For example, we can segment in four parts, which one part will be stock management. Uh, which all your stuff will be stored there. We have also supply management. We have production line, which is responsible to produce the product, of course. Uh, and we have uh, also the quality of the control, which at the end, after production line, we have to verify if, uh, if this product is valid or not, or it uh, fulfill the requirement that we have to 
uh, full free roll nodes. This is the, the concept. But we come to this type of factory and we try to uh, apply the industrial 4.0. So industrial 4.0 says, okay, connect all the devices and all the places which uh, the action happens, event happens, connect those data to the cloud. So you connect it with the IoT or wireless sensor network. And for example, wireless sensor network, they create a mesh network. So they connect it together. They are not using the Wi-Fi. They don't like Wi-Fi. They, they use the standard, which is the IEEE 802.15.4 is one of the standard, which is a very useful and it's very common and frequent. I mean, common in the industry. Uh, industrial application is very frequent to use. So then, of course, you will you will face with the Wi-Fi. Also, you will have Wi-Fi in the in these days. You will have Wi-Fi in everywhere. So, such as in home, in offices, and also in the factories, because everyone now has mobile phone and. This is something that is necessary to, to use. So, but the problem is uh, when Wi-Fi uh, comes to the factory, our wireless sensor network cannot work because they are working the same frequency spectrum and they, have, um, they are sending data uh, in a higher power. So more than the wireless sensor network because wireless sensor network works with a lower energy because they are working and they, they had to fulfill the low power uh, requirement. So what you have to do? One of the activity which I have done uh, last, let's say three years was trying to propose the methods and the algorithm and also model to uh, guarantee uh, the industrial uh, applications, let's say, or industrial domain uh, to fulfill the requirement for the reliability and low latency. So just to remind you about the two things, because today I will talk about it. So single hope and multi-hope. Single hope usually, ju just, just uh, as a, let's say, reference, uh, single hope, it means that all your leaf has, a one, uh, ha has one distance, just one distance uh, between, there is a one distance between the leaf and the root. But in the multi-hop, you have a more than one distance. So uh, when you are talking multi-hop, it means you have a many layer until uh, your packet travels between the leaf. But in the single hop, you have just one route. So you can uh, send data with, uh, with not a lot of latency. So it has uh, some advantage and disadvantage, which is not concerned for this talk, but there are uh, some advantages and disadvantages to use both of them. So it is not just one of them is better than the other one. And today also, uh, I wanted to say all my, uh, let's say, work uh, was done with the OpenWSN uh, open operating system and also you, by using the uh, open mode devices, which is the, one of the latest uh, WSN. Uh, I use because um, uh, both of them are open source and I was thinking to change something in the protocol. So I go with these two devices, two, not two devices, but two technologies. And they are supporting the 6 protocol. So easily we changed the protocols and we did a lot of experiment and we proposed a new algorithm to increase the reliability. And uh, this is the one of the actually activity which uh, I have done. We propose the model to the uh, for the single and multi hop network. Uh, we propose the mathematical model, so it is not data driven model. Uh, so we started from the Bernoulli uh, materials and we made all the model with the starting very simple assumption and at the end we could uh, data set and with the data set which we had we verified our model and we saw our model could really um, with the 99 percent precision can follow the our data set and at the end we try so to avoid the, using the data set and define just the parameter and get the expected uh, let's say performances or try to estimate the performances. It, uh, it is helpful because imagine when you want to uh, 
uh, install some devices in the factory and you want to do what you have to do you have to simulate the simulator or you can um, uh, try some uh, very fast way the model that we uh, propose is a very fast uh, let's say uh, analysis to uh, verify the uh, your performances if and estimate the performances uh, also we published the model in the uh, publication actually uh, in the ad hoc network uh, Elsevier uh, and for the multi hope uh, which uh, because at the beginning we started with the single hope then we moved to the multi hope because multi hope has a, a little bit difference between the uh, with the with the single hope um, we try to uh, let's say extend our model to the multi-hope and then we also include the power consumption and after uh, using the power consumption we try to uh, propose the optimizer so uh, now the model has optimizer also so we could optimize the network automatically so to to give the proposed let's say uh, a parameter for the for the six dish protocol, which also we try to uh, test this actually uh, protocol. As you could see here, we could also uh, here in the power consumption, we could estimate the, the first one, the green one is a real power consumption and the blue one is a predicted or not predicted, it's better to estimate it, uh, power consumption, which we could estimate with the uh, with the, our application. Uh, this is the first, um, I mean, uh, power consumption also with a different, also the different parameter in the network, which we have, I said, we have different parameter in the six dish and uh, we try with the different also configuration, different parameter to see if we can reach the, the expected, in, uh, let's say expected performances and we could estimate the system or not. Um, at the end, when we were working on the, uh, doing the experiment, uh, we were trying uh, to do the experiment uh, by the real devices. And at the end, it was very difficult because uh, I also, I forget to mention that uh, we published also other data set, which we, can, uh, we acquire, acquired and then logged for this more than six months. So all that, uh, because uh, there was not, a, at that time, it was not there was no uh, data set for the six dish protocol, and uh, we published in the ITRP data port, which everyone, which they are working in this area, they could use the uh, data set uh, to try to do some machine learning or anything that they want, uh, or doing the uh, data driven model or uh, anything, or the work that they want to do something similar to our work, they can do so they can continue the work. Uh, but during the activity, we faced with a lot of problems with the hardware, and we tried to do simul uh, use the simulation, but uh, or simulator, and we faced there is not good simulator for the six stage protocol, and they are trying just simulate the protocol, not simulate the or estimate or predict the performances. So we try to propose very user friendly and easy uh, protocol, which cloned exactly from the real devices. And also it has a place, I mean, which we included the noise model inside. So we have a real, let's say, uh, real environment, like a Wi-Fi environment, Imagine Wi-Fi environment and the uh, electricity environment, uh, electricity shock environment, which it's uh, it is uh, simulating also uh, the whole network with this requirement. We try with the different uh, just to verify if our simulator or predictor works um, uh, good or not. We try with different configuration, the latency, and we try to get the latency reliability and power consumption. And as you could see here, see the standard deviation, which the top uh, top is is for the real device, and the, in the bottom is the simulated uh, value. And also we can see also all the, I mean, more or less uh, the system works more than 98% similarity they have. And also reliability and power consumption is the same because if we have uh, the same latency, we could reach to the, the same power consumption and reliability. It's the, in fact, this is one of the other 
uh, uh, goal. And now I finish my, my talk, actually. Uh, as I said to you, I work uh, in the wireless sensor network, but mostly I work on the Industry 4.0. Just I wanted to show and share with you this picture from 1961, when third generation of the industry happened in the 60s. Uh, and uh, in that time, it was one uh, paper and journal, let's say, which uh, they were trying to show the future of the factories. And in the, in the picture was telling, okay, in the future, there is an agriculture plant which it can work automated. And there is no human uh, actually action. There is no human action in the production line. But uh, as you know, I still we are far from this this idea, because of course the big enterprises they have. But what industry 4.0 and why industry 4.0 born was uh, to push the small medium enterprises. And uh, we are as an engineer, we are uh, responsible to make this happen. Today, we will have also uh, Francesco's talk, which will be around the industry 4.0. Uh, and uh, I mean, we are working as a researcher to reach to that point. And we need, uh, I mean, uh, to push the industry to use our devices, I mean, or our technology. Thank you so much. And also I would like to mention uh, thanks to the CNR uh, of Torino, I mean, uh, and also Politecnico di Torino, which uh, make this uh, research happen and uh, they support three years my PhD. Thank you so much. And uh, if you have any question, uh, I am here to answer. Thank you, Mohabend. And uh, thanks for the call to arms so that people can join in and uh, uh, lead to a faster development to Industry 5.0. Yeah, uh, we have a couple of quick questions. So the first one is, um, okay, is the factory environment becoming more electrically noisy as we go towards uh, Industry 5.0? And uh, how is the design phase of uh, protocols or electronic systems affected by this? Okay, uh, okay. just at the beginning, I, I didn't, I missed the, the yeah, point. Yeah, okay, the, the meaning is, uh, um, if we are getting more a more noisy environment uh, yeah. uh, when we go from uh, 3.0 to 4 to 5, and if the design of uh, electronic systems becomes more difficult? Uh, actually, yes, it is uh, more difficult because uh, as, as uh, you know, we are living in the higher frequency. So with the higher frequency, usually it's difficult to, to control the, the, the noise and all the devices will be different. So exactly, uh, it is very difficult at this moment also. Uh, a lot of people talking about the 5G, uh, but uh, I would like to mention this. Uh, 5G is not for IoT. It is for IoT, but not for the, for the uh, connecting devices to the higher level. 5G is for the uh, connecting the backend. So, uh, it is for the, uh, let's say, broadband uh, network. So uh, as, I, I, as we are working in the, let's say, the frequency that is the Wi-Fi and wireless sensor network and other devices, they are very, very uh, fragile. So they, they can, they can uh, we could we miss a lot of uh, data by just a, a small shock in the factory. So... And this is very important uh, because of that reason, we try to use the TSCH network or, I mean, TSCH network, it's very uh, actually nice. If I can show you just, uh, I don't know if we have time uh, just to show you because of that reason. Uh, okay, let me go exactly to the picture if it goes, okay. Uh, as you can see here, the physical channel, which it is, you know, the physical channel, which we are working uh, re re in the reality with that, in each, each 20 millisecond, it's changing based on the random uh, value in the communication protocol, in the six-dish protocol. So it makes our work better, or let's say the, it increases the high, uh, reliability. 
this is very important. Also, it is important uh, to make uh, the physical channel, uh, let's say blacklist and whitelist, which I work on that also too. So yeah, the question is right, but we are trying as a researcher to make uh, the new protocol for the new environment, let's say, because we, as we are going, through the new technology, we will face with the new type of problems. So this is the answer which I can tell. Okay, so we need, uh, I guess, a huge effort to go to move yes, forward in exactly. this case. Okay. Yes. So thank you very much, Mohammed, for your presentation. Sorry, it takes uh, more than the expected time, so. Yeah, I guess uh, our viewers uh, enjoyed your uh, discussion. Thank you. So I will stop the sharing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much.